This lesson deals with SPICE models for JFETs and MOSFETs. You can find these notes in the ECE 302 ebook in Chapter 4, starting on page 17. Let's first look at the JFET SPICE model. As we did with diodes and BJTs, the modeling is done on the dot model line. And this time, for type, we'll use NJF for an N-channel JFET and PJF for a P-channel JFET. The symbols used in SPICE to model the JFET are different terms than we've been using. In SPICE, beta is the same as our K in our equations, and VTO is our pinch-off voltage. The default value of K is 10 milliamps per volt squared, and the default value for the pinch-off voltage is minus 2. Of course, the units on that are volts. And the sign of this is negative for an N or P channel device. Resistors began with the letter R, capacitors with C, inductors with L, voltage sources with V, current sources with I, and the JFET begins with the letter J. You can have up to seven letters or characters after that. The order of the element nodes are drain, gate, source, and then the model name. And in the model name, we can then express these values or use the default values. Let's curve trace the VI characteristics of I sub D versus VDS for various values of the gate source voltage. Put a voltage source across the gate to source, and then a voltage source across to drain the source. And for this particular simulation, we'll use our example that we had done previously of an IDSS of 18 milliamps and a pinch off voltage of minus three. We have a title. We can have some comment lines that tell us what this simulation is about. The drain source voltage is between nodes two and zero. I won't specify a value here, the default is zero. We're gonna vary that shortly. The gate source voltage is between nodes one and zero, call that VGS. And then our JFETs between the drain, gate, and source, so that's two, one, and zero. We'll call the model name JMOD. So dot model, JMOD, it's an N-channel JFET with a pinch-off voltage of minus three and a value of K of IDSS divided by the pinch-off squared. That's 18 milli divided by minus three squared, or nine. That give me two milliamps per volt squared. In SPICE, the M uppercase or lowercase means milli. If you have 10 to the sixth, it's MEG. We'll sweep our DC voltage. I'll vary the voltage of the battery from zero to 10 volts and do 2000 points, five millivolts per step. And I'll do that for different values of the gate source voltage. I'll take bigger steps of the gate source voltage. I'll go from zero volts to minus four volts in one volt steps. We'll have five simulations, each of which has 2000 points. Running SPICE simulations, you can find on my homepage, there's a handout for running PSPICE. If you run the simulation, this is what you get. If you ask for the current in the drain of J1, get a family of curves. Here's the first curve, second curve, third curve, fourth curve, fifth curve. The first one was a gate source of zero, and of course that's gonna be our value of IDSS, and it does turn out to be 18 milliamps. Once we get to the pinch-off voltage, anytime you go more negative than that, we just get zero current. Let's next plot the transfer curve of I sub D versus VGS in the current saturation region for a value of VDS equal to 15 volts. We're way out into the current saturation region. Use our same configuration we had before, but now we'll be varying the gate source voltage for a fixed value of VDS. Put for VDS between nodes two and zero, 15 volts, and then we'll vary the gate source from zero to minus four volts, and we'll do 200 points. Dividing that four by 200, you get 20 millivolts per step. This is always a positive number. It simply takes the first point and goes to the second point, this step increment. So it's gonna go first at zero, then minus 20 millivolts, minus 40 millivolts, and so on. Running the simulation and again plotting the drain current of J1. It's gonna be versus the swept variable of VGS. You can see here I've got this equation that goes as a parabola, but it doesn't continue on this way. It just simply levels off. Spice had to figure that out, that parabolic equation stops there. The point here where it intersects the axis is the pinch-off voltage of minus three, and where it intersects the y-axis for zero volts is IDSS. A MOSFET also uses the dot model line to describe what kind of device it is. For an N-channel MOSFET, we're gonna use NMOS, and for a P-channel MOSFET, we use PMOS. We again have to convert our equation notation to the SPICE notation. In SPICE, they use the symbol KP, which actually stands for K prime. In the original program, they just had uppercase letters, so they just did KP. That turns out to be equal to twice what we're calling K. To be able to calculate this, we'll have to take our value of K and double it. The value of the threshold voltage is the value of VTO, 
But be aware that for an n-channel device, it needs to be positive, but for a p-channel device, it's actually negative. This is quite different than what we've run into before. The default value for kp is 20 micrograms per volt squared, and the default for VTO is zero volts, although this is highly unlikely that you could do this. The threshold voltages have been getting smaller and smaller, but never they can equal zero because we have to induce the channel. Our MOSFET element begins with the letter M, but it has four terminals, drain gate source, but now a bulk pin, and then the model name where we'll give these particular parameters or other ones that we'll learn about in the course. Let's next plot I sub D versus VDS for different values of the gate source voltage. Here, hook up our MOSFET. I'm going to short the bulk to the source. Here's my drain, gate, and source. I'll put a battery across the drain source. We're going to vary that. And then likewise, the gate source voltage. And then for this particular MOSFET, we use the one in our example where K was 0.5 milliamps per volt squared, and the threshold voltage was plus 3. We have a title, comments. The drain source battery is between nodes 2 and 0 with a default value of 0. The gate source is between 1 and 0 with a default value of 0. And our transistor, I'll call it M1, is between drain, gate, source, and bulk. 2100, zero, zero, and we'll just call this mod, dot model, mod, an NMOS transistor with a threshold voltage of 3, so VTO is 3, and K prime is twice the value of K, which would be 2 times 0.5 milli, or 1 milliamp per volt squared. We'll vary our battery here from 0 to 10 volts, and again, I'll do 2,000 points, and then we'll go from our gate source voltage from 0 to 6 volts in 1 volt steps. Here's 0 volts, 1 volt, 2 volts, 3 volts, where our threshold is, then 4, 5, and 6. The value at 6 volts is 4.5 milliamps. That's exactly what we had in our sketches previously. should point out that the graph here is a default variable, VDS, and I'm plotting the drain current in transistor M1. Let's plot the transfer curve of I sub D versus VGS in the saturation region. And again, put ourselves way out in the active region at 15 volts. The same file we had before, but now we're going to make the drain source voltage 15. And the dot model line is the same. And then we're going to vary the gate source voltage from 0 to 6 volts. And I'll do this in 200 steps. 6 minus 0 divided by 200 is 30 millivolts per step. We'll start at 0, then 30 millivolts, then 60 millivolts, and so on. Plotting I sub D versus the variable VGS, which is the default x-axis. You can always change that, but that's what we want to plot, is our gate source voltage and the drain current that goes with that. And you can see that the current here is zero until we get into that current saturation region. Here's our value of threshold, and here's the value of the drain current, in this case for a gate source voltage of six. So that's consistent with our previous hand calculations that we did. And these are the SPICE models for JFETs and MOSFETs.